There we are. There we go. Perfect. All right. Awesome. I think we're there. I think we are. I'm just checking just to make check, sure. Check we the are. calling card. We're live. Awesome. All right. Perfect. We, man, we, Tom, we're getting better and better at this. We're like professionals now. Practice makes perfect, doesn't <laughs> That's it? That's right. Awesome. All right, everybody. We are back with another Let's Talk. And I know a bunch of you guys have been following us and plugging into the different people that we've been bringing on. And it's been a huge blessing to have incredible speakers that have had results in life already and are striving for more. Whether we're going through good times or bad times, there's always good content that you can plug in and learn from other people. And today we've got Bob White on with us. And this gentleman, I've only had the opportunity to know him for a little bit but it's been a huge blessing. I've learned a ton. If you've plugged into the newsletter that we put out, if you haven't, you can ask us for it. We could send it to you. But Bob wrote an incredible article on there and I've been through it two times. I've taken notes from it. Just great content. I'm excited to have him with us today. I'm going to pass it over to Tom and Tom's going to introduce him. Well, thank you, Paul. Yeah, great to be back. Um, it's been a while and uh, it's always exciting when we when we get to go live with this. So uh, welcome, welcome to... Uh, to the talk today, Bob, and um, let me get started with the many accolades that Bob has uh, um, had throughout his life. Lifelong resident of Port Colburn, um, went into a career in education, taught at uh, Vimy School in Port Colburn, which is one that I attended for a couple of years, I think a little bit before Bob mm -hmm. taught there, um, and then went on to be principal and um, um, a supervisory officer with the Niagara South Board of Education. And that's really where we crossed paths. I was, um, I was changing careers at, at the time and, and got into the IT space and we were doing work with the school board and, and, um, and that put us in touch with Bob and we worked with Bob and his team to develop programs and provide computers and, and really bring technology into the schools. And, and he was a great asset for them and for us at the time. Um, after his, his retirement from there, oh my gosh, um, went to a, uh, an internet services company and, and, and assisted them with, with some of their logistics and sales and marketing. And um, um, also then moved on to a, um, a, a regional auto parts firm and assisted them moving moving into a sales uh, uh, area. Um, post that, um, became a, re a historical consultant or historical research consultant in early aviation and in the history of kites. And if you, any of you are familiar with, um, what is it, Canal Days, you've probably seen uh, uh, Bob and one of his kites or more than one of his kites and some of his peers down there at uh, um, the park. Uh, is, it, is it still H.H. H. Noel Park? Uh, they've moved it uh, recently to a different location, but yeah, that's where yeah. it was for so, most yeah. of its life, yes. So <clears> down, <throat> down in, anyway, in Park Corbin <clears throat> and Canal Days, and then they'd be them flying the kites, and that's, uh, that's one of the, uh, I think, one of the things that Bob has helped to spearhead there. Um, worked as an international researcher, historical researcher for A.G. Bell Foundation, CBC TV, the History Channel, um, and I believe you said that you were even involved with uh, the Smithsonian. Yes. Um, now, as his uh, fourth, fifth, I'm not sure which retirement he's in, he's <laughs> running a small artisan woodworking shop called Sandpaper, Sandpiper Woodworking, uh, doing custom projects from his home in Port Coburn. Lives with his wife, Christine, and she's a, uh, a noted wildlife photographer and artist, and I've watched her grow and become an amazing photographer, and they, they now incorporate uh, that into their, into Bob's woodworking, and, and, and um, burn or etch the photographs onto under wood and they, they also live at home with their their Shetland sheep dog mm -hmm. they have three sons and six grandchildren which I'm sure is a, is a uh, is, is awesome so welcome Bob thank you and, um, Tom Paul okay so so um I think I'm going to go to the article that that <clears> that you <throat> wrote for our newsletter there's, there's some great points in that and it just gives us lots to talk about and, and about uh, facing success in a career and, and, and basically going through life uh, uh, and having a very successful career and family life. So right, right off the beginning, we started with competence. Uh, you talked about confidence will prevail in, in, um, uh, in life and in work. So, so I guess really that talks about um, becoming good at what you do. And, and, and maybe you can give us a little bit of an idea of how you um, excelled and, and moved yourself forward just by, by um, improving yourself. 
Well, one of the, um, you know, we often don't listen to our, our parents, especially when we're younger, but one of uh, the things that my dad said to me that stuck for some reason was that um, whatever you do, you should do it the absolute best you can. Um, try to excel at it. Try to be as good as you personally can. Try to learn from others and match their levels and so on and so forth in a not in an overly competitive, but in a friendly sort of way, be the best you can be in anything you do. And his theory was that if you did that, you would be noticed at what you did. You would be valued for what you did. And then from that point on, you would be tapped for other opportunities because, oh, look, this person can do that really well. I think we should try this person in, in that new role or in an expanded role. And later when I was responsible for training um, potential principals in Ontario, uh, through the Ontario Institute for Studies and Education, that's one thing I tried to always impart is be the best teacher you can be. And then people will understand that you understand the role of the classroom, the role of education, and then they will uh, consider you for other things, team leader, um, perhaps a subject leader, whatever. And, and your path then starts moving successfully upward. That's a, that's a great point. And <clears throat> it, it, it rolls right into the uh, view your job role, job or role with a wide lens. Um, I just finished reading The Magic of Thinking Big and, and he talks about, um, um, uh, I guess, consulting with a, a company and, and the president wanted them to interview th salespeople for a promotion to sales manager. And they narrowed it down to three people. And, and he went and interviewed each one of them, not uh, with, under the guise of, of moving them to sales manager, but just how would you help the company? What do you think we should do to grow? And, and, and the, the first two guys said, oh yeah, the company's great. We love it the way it is. Don't change anything. We're happy with, with the way, way things are. And then the one guy even grabbed his arm on the way out the door and said, don't change anything. It's perfect the way it is. So then he went off to the third guy and the third guy just said, you know what? Thank you so much for coming to me and asking me. I, I, I just love the opportunity you're giving me here to, to maybe give some of my views on how we can improve the company and how we can make some changes to, to make things better and maybe more profitable for the company going forward. Well, go forward with the whole interview process back to the, the owner and, and, the guy obviously with the forward thinking and, and the, the, that um, um, viewing his job with that, that wide lens, um, that was the way the owner was thinking as well and said, you know what, that's the guy. And he's the one that got hired because of that right. attitude. And, and, and that's the same thing you're saying. And, and that, yeah, that's, that's what I was suggesting with that point, like be the best you can be, but also then sometimes that means to be the best you can be in your particular role you should figure out where that role fits within the whole organization and what else impacts on it and how do you impact with it. You're not an individual alone in, in an organization. You're part of an organism, so to speak. So if you, you know, view the job with a wide lens, you can see what others are doing that impact you or don't help you. And all of that gives you greater understanding of how to grow your own skills and grow your own path towards helping that organization and you and your role become better. So that's what I meant by that second point, uh, other than do the best you can or confidence prevails every time. And then, uh, yeah. I just, wanna, I just wanna ask one thing, cause when we first talked, you had told me, and, and I wrote that down for myself and, and about what your dad had taught you. And you, you, you said something a little bit more when we talked that you didn't mention at this time, but I really think that mm -hmm. it's worth mentioning because, you know, I've, you know, you could either um, spread yourself thin, learn a ton of stuff, or you can, you know, put all your eggs in one basket and sit on it and protect them where in a job or in a career, you know, I think it's important sometimes to make sure you get good at what you're good at and then yeah. excel in that area. But you said, like you, it, what you said with about your dad, when we talked, um, you said, um, so I, this isn't verbatim. I, I wrote it down a bit, but be the best that you could be at what you're doing and learn a bit of the stuff around you 
Right. When you said that, you said learn a bit about the stuff around you. And then knowing where you were and where you've went through and who you've become by you learning a little bit extra every time, that's how you climb the ladder in the school industry. I mean, to the point where you went from teacher to um, really the top of the school industry, right? right? And by climbing that ladder, it's not because you didn't just get good at what you were good at. You, you, were, you mastered that. That was the focus. But you, like your dad said, you always learned a little bit more. And then, boom, you look at your career now and what you've done. Right. And that's exactly coming from there. And I, and I think people often tend to map out for themselves, a, a, and, and some books e even purport that you should do this, but map out your five-year strategy and your 10-year plan and all that. And, and I don't negate that concept, but I think sometimes you can be so concentrating on, oh, I'm not here yet, um, where I marked myself in my plan, and yet you might be more competent than if you had been because you're just gathering all kinds of skills broad wide deep mm -hmm. and then when opportunities do arise you're not only selected or nominated for that role you've got a broad base of knowledge a broad base of script skills that you bring into that and you're more likely to succeed right out of the get-go at that new role and and have an impact so uh, it that, that's now that may be just me looking back over the path that I've been fortunate enough to take too but I honestly believe there's some sense to that you should have goals but if you focus on a goal itself maybe that can be distracting too you should focus on learning everything you can doing it well doing it easily doing it with a high degree of confidence with the goal in the back of your mind yeah I, I want to do more yeah, I'd like to yeah. contribute more. I'd like to, once I, you know, once you know everything about your job, and I guess it could be said you never really do, yeah. but once you know yourself really well and you know the job very well, you don't want to spend 25 years there either. You want new experiences that enrich you. And that, that's, I guess, what I mean by your competence helps you to prevail, um, view your job with a wide lens and see what you can learn around you. And be aware of how you uh, connect with uh, the workplace team, you know, always you keep it be, exciting. Yeah. You can't be just there for yourself. You're, you're part of an organism, as I said, that make, makes things better. And we you know, have a question that I just want for everybody to think of. And I, this was, I was listening to an audio the other day and the speaker said, when was the last time you learned something new? Like hmm. when was the last time you learned something? For me, uh, actually this weekend, uh, Tom and I are going to learn something new, something mm -hmm. that I've never learned before, right? And 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 I uh, last year I got my boating license. That's something mm -hmm. new. Like mm -hmm. think about it. And actually, if you're listening to this and watching it after you watch it in the comments, so put something that you've learned in the past 12 months, something new. I'd love to hear it. Share with us what's something new that you've learned. Because really, if you're not learning new things, then what are we living for? Exactly. Right. And I don't think those have those experiences have to be just job focused either. They can be interest focused because interests yeah. uh, often have the same kind of core skills that you're going to develop that because you want to find out how to be a better photographer. You want to find out how to write a better story. Uh, you, you know, those will carry over back into your job. Uh, and um, I think so pursuing interests enriches you as a person you're far more interesting to your colleagues and the whole team and it gives you things strengths that you don't even realize it's helping to to uh, reinforce it's yeah. interesting paul and i were talking earlier and he said that 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 really you were an employee with an entrepreneurial mindset and and that's 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 an entrepreneur is someone who is thinking yes. outside the box, looking yes. for opportunity, yes. looking for, for, for growth. Yes. And, and, and Yes. And, and one of the things we did in the former Niagara South board was we, we, uh, we looked as, at ways to uh, try to strengthen each individual school through a school improvement team process. And that was very entrepreneurial in its day. Um, in fact, we became so known for that, we were invited to join the International Congress for School Effectiveness, which, which is a global community. And the idea was to focus on the mission of teaching and learning, the child growing, 
and then look at the culture of the school as well as the teacher in it to help them grow. Nobody was paying attention to that. They were paying attention to how does the budget run? How does the school run mechanically? What are the, what's the sense of order in the school? All, all important, but nobody was building a culture of teaching, learning and growing together among professional staff. So that was very entrepreneurial on our part and uh, very fulfilling. And that took me back, if you want to say this, to you had to be a good teacher to understand what teachers go through. You had to be a good principal to understand how principals build good schools. So all the time you're carrying your previous competencies with you into your new role. And, and that's just as true in business as it is in something like education. Uh, you have to understand. They always say the best managers, the best leaders have some experience on the shop floor. You know, they start you know, shipping. You, you had said, um, you know, it takes a good leader to build a culture. Yeah. And 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 that's absolutely right. And, and throughout your story, I've watched just in, in I didn't watch it, but I felt like it did because your what you wrote was incredible. But through that article, you you are definitely a leader and and your leadership is what built the culture and everything's a business doesn't matter which way you look at it and if the leader builds the culture the culture builds the business that's right and and if the leader doesn't build the culture the business falls apart and mm -hmm. i mean today it's super important to make sure as a business owner as an employee whatever it is, wherever you are, CEO in a company, that you're focused on building a culture. And that's all you have to focus on because that will build the company. Well, that brings me to an experience that we talked about in our informal con uh, conversations before. I uh, had an opportunity to work with a major company that was uh, regional in nature, and it was considered to be outstanding, not only by the peer businesses, but by uh, its own customers, its own clients. And then I watched that because it was a private business and people have to look to at some point to, you know, moving on and retiring and the goal then for most small business people, and this wasn't small, but private business people was to, to sell and, you know, enter into retirement. And I watched a major corporation who, grabbed this opportunity because it was dominant in its area and move in and apply a, a financial business structure to it that completely was oblivious to the culture of the community that had been created by that business. That business was focused on customer service, on community involvement, as well as selling the best products and getting them to their customers. And they decided, you know, you have to shave this and you have to shave that. And all of a sudden people saw that they were not the main purpose. Um, they knew they were making money for that previous company, but all of a sudden they were seen as, as much a commodity as the products that were being sold. That's and they and and they just left left in in droves for other businesses that were treating them more um, as partners. Yeah. yeah, in a supply yeah. chain. Business. They were looking for a better culture. Yes, yes, and and that's that's really in, in the article you wrote for us the 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 two points you talked about culture in in the um, the one context and the and the relationships being vital in the other. Absolutely, and those two vital. two things go hand in hand. And, and right, uh, um, right. You, 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 your relationship with employees or, or fellow workers is is important and, and, and it's a culture thing for sure, but that you need to be able to feel part of something that, it, that as though it's your own. And, and that's right. And, and um, one thing is your attitude, like you talked about being the best that you can be. If a person doesn't have that, they're not necessarily going to be able to fit into that. But from the other side of it, you want to encourage people to be their best as well. Right. Well, and and my, my, uh, I ran into several people like that. They, you know, over the years, I thought, well, okay, you're not interested in being the best you can be, but let's see if we can help you gain satisfaction about being better than you already are. And, and, you know, once you started that momentum of growth and you could legitimately, not fawningly, but legitimately praise that movement, it's just like a student who experiences success, even in business. 
they are willing to do more. They want to they become self-involved in doing better. So those are, those are my lessons. And I mean- Awesome. <clears throat> just one thing, I just wanted, I wanted to say one thing. First of all, I, I really appreciate you taking the time and not just jumping on with us today, but for preparing the article that you prepared. And you know, when you write a book, that book lives on forever. Mm -hmm. and, and I really feel that your article is something that can live on forever and people can gain value from. So if you're watching this right now, get get a hold. We'll post the article on our on our Let's Talk. Get a hold of that article, read through it, and then take a minute and in the comments below, put a message of what the talk or the call or the or the article that Bob put together, what it's done for you. If something's benefiting you from what we are doing here, please share it in the comments because not only will that help us improve and get better as individuals, but that will do a great job to encourage the speakers to realize, wow, we're really giving back. We're really helping because good information continues to go, but it's very hard to find today. There's tons. People tell me all the time, oh, I can get it on Google. Free information is the most expensive information you'll ever get. Right. I, I ask my wife. <clears throat> Yeah, well, Deb's always been. Deb's always been. Say it's Tara. There There's a awesome. cost to that information. Yes. Yeah, it was expensive information. That's not pretty information. Uh, but, Bob, thank you so much. You're I, welcome, I, I appreciated a ton for you coming on today. And, 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 and Tom, thanks for connecting us with Bob. It's been a blessing. And um, I know um, we'll wrap this up. But before we do, I just any closing thoughts? Tom will usually take a minute or so trying to figure out how to shut the actual live <laughs> zoom off. Um, but as um, we're, 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 we're professionals at this and it really, we're, we're learning and it's been awesome to do it. But Bob, before we wrap up, do you have any closing thoughts? Well, I think your, your um, participants who are watching will probably realize that um, I'm not a young entrepreneur. Um, so my observations are based on uh, looking back and very experiential. Um, but every day, I think there are things you can do better. And that, you know, starting this little artisan woodworking business has been as much for myself in terms of things to do and things to learn. But all of a sudden, I saw an opportunity to connect with people, build a clientele. Um, so I think at any stage in your life, you can apply these things. Maybe it's something that's intrinsic in some of us more than in others that we want to do this as well, that entrepreneurial nature, but um, it's fun and you got to make life fun and you got to remember right. that your job isn't everything. You have to have fun in life. So yes, those are and, my and, closing and, thoughts. And I think awesome. that takes you back to the, the final paragraph of your of your article about family and, and life. And those are the Very most important, important things. Like, yeah. Yep. I mean, a job is a means to, to support your family. And, and Yeah, it's a means to living. And, and you, it, isn't, it isn't what you should live for. You know, my, my oldest son once said he, uh, he was reading about retirement speeches and he found that the successful people said they never stood up and said they wished they had worked harder or spent more hours at work. Yeah, they never I wish did. I, had, I wish I had more time. They yeah. wish I had more time. And, and no one's, yeah, no so one's on there. That, that balance is so critical yep. and not balance. easy to achieve always. And sometimes it's out of balance because of the nature of business. But yep. something to think about. Thanks, okay. guys. Thank, I thank, thank you. Okay. Thanks again, Bob. Really appreciate okay. it. Take care. All right. Now I need to get my mouse over here and figure out where we're at. And I'm not going to move I'm, until you shut me off. How do we go? How do we go? Unlock? <laughs> I'm gonna end Have a great now. day, everybody. Okay. Take care.